Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone, round three of the English Premier League ended in dramatic fashion on Sunday as Liverpool made it three from three by outclassing arch rivals Manchester United by three goals to nil at Old Trafford. A first double from Luis Diaz and Mohamed and a Mohamed Salah strike just before the hour mark condemned the Red Devils to their second successive loss of the new season. Speaking at the post-match press conference, the Reds manager, Arne Slot, praised his team's attitude. I think uh, everything which you want to see as a manager you saw in this game. So there were difficult moments for us. Uh, I think United started really well. Conceded one or two corner kicks in, uh, in that moment. But we fought ourselves through those moments. Then we got a disallowed goal, but there was no negative reaction at all. We just kept on playing afterwards. Scoring free, could have scored more. Uh, two important saves from Ali in the second half. So everything was there. And maybe the one that was most important is the work rate was incredible by all of them uh, without the ball. And that, uh, that makes it as a very positive day today. Yeah. Yeah, when the best part of the match for you is one or two corner kicks at the start, you know you're in serious problem. Now, despite the defeat, Manchester United manager Eric Tenag remained positive and reiterated his stance that he is rebuilding the team. Just a third game in the season. Again, we have to build a new team. I explained this uh, for the, uh, so many times also on, um, on the Friday in the press conference. Uh, we will build this new team. We have young players. Uh, also, we have now players to build in in the season. Today we had, I think, two players, three players, first start of the season. And they didn't play 90 minutes. Uh, we will be fine. But it's clear we have to improve. Uh, but in the end of the season, I'm quite confident again. Uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will have a big chance to lift another trophy. A lot more confident than the fans, that much I can tell you in all the results in the round. Let's go through them. So that Liverpool victory ahead of Manchester United at the top. Chelsea 1-1 with Crystal Palace. Newcastle 2-1 over Tottenham. West Ham losing 3-1 to Manchester City. Of course, Erling Haaland with a hat-trick there. Brentford 3-1 over Southampton. And in a dramatic, crazy encounter, Bournemouth coming from... 2-0 down with, what, just minutes to go. They scored the first goal in the 87th minute and are coming from behind to beat Everton 3-2. Yeah, ridiculous stuff. 1-1 between Fulham and Ipswich. Leicester losing to Aston Villa. That's the game Leon Bailey got hurt in. And Nottingham Forest 1-1 against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Joining us on set to recap the action from the round is our Football analyst, the prediction furu is my new name for him, Lejay Williams. Have you ever heard that before, Lejay? Oh, furu. What, what, what was that one now mean now, Ricardo? It just means fake guru. <laughs> you see, you see now, this is what happens when you're not around for too long, you know, people don't remember. But then again, you're only as good as your last prediction. So now that the football season is back, I'm... Here to reclaim my throne, you know? Yeah. Okay, it's all good. Let's talk about Manchester United and uh, Liverpool yesterday. And I'll, I'll get right to it, right? Um, Eric Tenag, he seems very confident that he can turn around whatever is happening at Manchester United at the moment. I've watched all three games this season, and there is nothing that impresses me about this Manchester United team. And in my opinion... I don't think it has been as bad as the three games I have seen this campaign. There is no progression from last year. I think this is as bad as it has ever been. And when I look at this team, I see a team that will struggle to finish in the top 10. One, how are you reading it? And two, boy, this feels early to ask this question. Is it time for Tenag to go? Well, I mean, Before I... Lich answers the question, though, can I just ask you, Ricardo, Sure. if you're confident that Ten Hag is confident that he can turn things around. The words coming out of his mouth suggested that, but he, he appeared to be struggling to me. He appeared to be just saying what he feels he needs to say, and I'm not sure how confident he is. But I think he style. believes it. No, but that's his style. He did that all of last season, no. too. I think he genuinely believes that he can turn this around. Okay, well, well, I let's... think he genuinely believes that he has the tools yes. that can get Manchester United to where 
he wants them well, to go. Well, you have to believe I, I it first, is, right? But... Before you can execute, you have to believe in yourself. So mm. I guess we have to give him that. Yeah, Liz, you, you, you think he's confident or he's just saying the words? I, I think he's confident, but he's confident for the wrong reasons, you know? Yeah. It's obvious that Eric Ten Hag is a results-based guy. So once he wins a trophy and he's waving it in front of fans' faces, he's saying that's enough despite the putrid performances that Manchester United have been putting in for quite some time now. And it's actually hilarious because in his post-match press conference, he was mentioning XG and how Manchester United didn't do that badly when it comes down to XG. And for our viewers at home, XG is essentially the probability of a goal going in once a shot is taken. Yeah. And, you know, the XG on the day actually was 1.36 for Manchester United and 1.73 for Liverpool. So, you know, you're saying that maybe Manu could have scored a couple of goals and they probably should have. But then when you dive deeper into it and you think about the game state of when Manchester United were getting those chances to score, 1.1 of their 1.36 XG came after they were already 3 nil down. Yeah. So that doesn't really show any sort of progression. And as Ricardo was mentioning, you know, Ricardo, I'm glad you mentioned that prediction guru stuff at the start because when, when I was really making my name, you know, back when I just started and I'd go back to March 6th, to actually have the exact date, March 6th, 2023, when Eric Ten Hag was in his first season, they had recently, Manchester United recently won the Carabao Cup against Newcastle, and a couple of weeks later, they lost 7 0 to Liverpool. And you know, everyone was saying, you know, that's just a, a little blip. Yeah. I came on the show and I said they were due a shellacking. I know you guys remember that one. And, yes. you know, people were on me, and I was, I was criticizing Casemiro in particular because I was saying that not only was he declining physically, but his on-the-ball play, he's completing 60% of his passes, 70% of his passes as a controlling midfielder would eventually come to bite Manchester United. And it's just really hilarious that it has played out exactly like that, not only last season, in addition to him declining physically, which has affected how he defends, but on the ball, he's just not good enough as well. And that was a big issue mm. for how Manchester United were really turned over against Liverpool. So yeah. you said hilarious. It was hilarious. Well, yeah. as an Arsenal fan. Well, I, I, that's what I was about no, to say. I, I'm saying I'm, I was saying it's hilarious because I think Eric Ten Hag is just a little bit delusional. That's why I said that he actually does believe okay. that he can yeah. turn it around. But, you know, for, for, for my money, I've, I've said it for quite some time. I haven't been here uh, in a while, but I've been saying it to my friends and all. I, I do think that by November, Eric Ten Hag will be out the door. Um, You're giving him until November. Yeah, because look, looking at the fixtures, it's always, a, it's always like they give them a bit of time. They actually gave him a vote of confidence today. And you know what the vote of confidence means in English football when it comes down to the owners. So that, that's a different thing. But yeah. Eric Ten Hag, I, I, I'm not confident he can turn this around at all. How important, though, is this international break for Eric Ten Hag and his team? It comes at a time where they're struggling. I mean, it's actually a saying in football that when you go through a disappointing results, it's actually good to get the next game going as quickly as possible. So I think this international break is not, has not come at the best time for them because then you have two weeks for the fans to stir, yeah. two weeks for the board to then think about, is he the right man? Because you have to remember, Manchester United were actively looking for a new coach over the summer. And when they couldn't land the coach that they wanted, they, went they decided to stick with Eric Ten Hag. So I, I think it, it's, it was a bad decision on their part. And then when you couple it with the fact that they've continued to build his second Ajax team because that's really what they've done. They've given Eric Ten Hag even more of the players that he would have wanted. Um, I know you would mention players being out, but when you think about Manchester United's back five, the goalkeeper and the four defenders, four of those players played for Eric Ten Hag at Ajax. And a lot of those players, I'd say, apart from Mazuari, has not really shown themselves in the best light for the past year or so. So I think they've given him too much power and it's at their detriment right now. And what I don't want us to do is give Manchester United too much power and time on the show. We're going to have to wrap up this segment. Liverpool are the team we should be talking about. They beat Manchester United in such a manner. Mohamed Salah came out and he spoke about the fact that his contract will be ending at the end of this season. So much to talk about Liverpool under Arnie Slot. Yeah, I think Arnie Slot has been fantastic. And, you know, there is a word that has been thrown around a lot lately in football circles, you know, Ara. I'm not really a fan of the word or how it's been used, but I think it's really evident by the way how you see Arnest Lott communicates. He did a press conference or interview with Sky Sports right after the game and how he 
in around a minute and a half or so detailed all of Manchester United's weaknesses, how he planned to exploit them and how it played out exactly like that. That's a sign of a brilliant coach and I, I think that is just something that you can see when you're picking a coach, you don't only go for, um, okay, he was winning this league because Arne Slat was a coach that was losing to Eric Ten Hag's Ajax, but you have to think about the vision that you want to employ. Liverpool generally do that well with their signings and their coaching appointments. And Arne Slatty, I think, is a wonderful you know, coach coming after Jurgen Klopp. Interesting that you spoke about that Sky Sports interview because I saw a comment um, in that interview, um, Slot spoke about Manchester United's style of play last season in comparison to what he has seen this season in detail as well. And then I saw a comment that said that Manchester United fans have heard about their style of play for the first time in three years. So Yeah, yeah I mean, it's true. I think he was really... Coaches analyse the game much different than we do. So he's giving Eric Ten Hag much more grace than an analyst would. But I think to say style of play, that's a bit no, hyperbolic. No, I think it, that he's saying that they don't know their style of play because of Ten Hag or all the other Yeah, yeah I mean, because I, I, don't, I don't think they have a clear one. Or, or if they do have a clear one, it's clearly not effective. That's the point Chapo was making. Yeah, well, I, I mean, Ch Chapo is laughing to steer away from the pain. But I know Silence and Chapo are pretty good right now, so... It's okay. Listen, quickly, how about the pain of Arsenal drawing? Um, and Declan Rice. That might be the end of your title bid for 2024, Because you remember the same thing happened last season. You see, it is the third game week. But you didn't say that for Manu? <laughs> <laughs> because, because we know what was happening. We, we know what Manu is. We know what Arsenal is. We know, we know what, what Arsenal does too. Arsenal does well all season and then gives Manchester City the when, title. When, when did you do that last season? L but... Y'all, that's what he, the point he was making. Y'all dropped points. Yeah, but I'm saying Chapo is team. wrong, <laughs> as per usual. Listen, listen let, let's talk about something serious because we have to go anyhow. In, yeah. in five seconds, Erling Haaland, another hat trick, eighth in the English Premier League. Is he the finest goal scorer we've seen in the history of the EPL? I, I'm not ready to say that. Yes or no, not yet. Not right yet. now. Not he yet. Is. Next one, three seconds. Can he get to 70 goals this season? No. Once he doesn't pick up an injury. All right. So says the prediction for you. <laughs> Let's go to a break on the Sports Mag Zone. We'll be back. <laughs>